On April 4th, Denver voters will decide who will be the next mayor. There are 17 people on the ballot. They include four women, members of the LGBTQ community, and people of color hoping to break barriers and become the first Denver mayor from their community. Well, almost 32 years ago, Wellington Webb and his wife Wilma broke one such barrier, becoming Denver's first black mayor and first lady. Our Micah Smith sat down with both, and tonight sharing some little known details about their story. If you've lived in the Denver Metro for a while, these faces may be familiar to you. Wellington and Wilma Webb, the first black mayor and first lady of Denver. But there are some things about the couple you may not know. So let's start from the beginning. Born at Cook County Hospital, Chicago, Illinois. As a kid, I uh, developed asthma at an early age and uh, Tried to tough it out, but the humidity, the pollen, and everything in Chicago was too difficult for me. I moved to Denver for seventh grade. I'm one of the few who is a native of Denver, Colorado. I was born here. I actually began getting more involved in the community and in doing things for people uh, around 1968. Uh, of course, that was the year that Dr. King was assassinated. Wilma joined the Democratic Party and served as district captain, also helping desegregate Denver public schools. Around that time, Wellington was rejected for a job in the same district. My grandmother, uh, she sent me to see Mayor Kurgan, uh, which was totally embarrassing because I didn't know Mayor Kurgan. But um, I saw Kurgan on a Tuesday at a contract to teach for DPS on Friday. And I told my grandmother, must be something to some of this politics. But I did not take the job for DPS. Instead, Wellington taught at Fort Logan. He credits that time with setting him up for a career in politics. It was rocky and bumpy. And, you know, I, I also, Wilma and I got married in 1971. We bought this house in 1971. I ran for office in 1971. In 1972, Wellington was elected to the Colorado House of Representatives. And in 1980, Wilma became a state representative as well. In 1987, Wellington became city auditor and then started eyeing the mayor's office. They had just done a poll and uh, the district attorney was at 67 percent. I was at seven. Wilma never believed the poll. No, I never believed it at some point in time. Uh, a group of us decided that it would be great for him to walk the city. And so, what you walk for, 320 days? Or? No, 320 miles. Wellington remembers one woman they met along the way. I still see her. This woman stopped me yeah. and said, I only have one dollar to give. And that's all I have. I tried to give it back to her. She wouldn't take it. And I said, there's no way in the hell we're going to lose this race. These people are applauding because it would be nice that the next mayor be someone that grew up in Denver. After Wellington won, together, the Webbs pushed for legislation to improve the lives of Coloradans. And long after the couple's terms ended, they continued giving back to their community. The Webbs have personally donated thousands to various causes, and the Wellington Webb Endowment Fund for Denver Health alone has raised nearly $1.4 million. I give because there's still so much more to do. And hopefully it will inspire some others to give too. Reporting in Denver, Micah Smith, Denver 7. How much they mean and have meant to Denver. And I, I really do encourage you to watch that full interview with Wilma and Wellington Webb. You can find it on Denver7.com. Also, you can find our in-depth election guide to help you decide who gets your vote to be the next mayor of Denver.